Hello YouTube, it is Atticus and welcome to my Dark Elves Cavalry Guide for Total War Warhammer 2, uh, specifically the multiplayer. So yeah, a little bit about me for anybody who's uh, just joining us on this second guide. I am a, um, my channel is dedicated to Dark Elves. Uh, I've spent a lot of time, you know, learning the ins and outs of the Druki, their capabilities, their lore, you know, how to play them on the game. Um, I have about right now 2,600 hours um, spent on the game and yeah i um i mean you know i've been really just trying to you know learn uh you know a uh intimately the uh you know the capabilities and uh you know what makes the drukies tick and i want to pass that information on to you guys and in this guide we're going to be looking at you know specifically the cav um units for the drukie i, I we're going to you know talk about what makes them good you know, what makes them, you know, unique, um, you know, some of their different attributes, their traits, and I'm, I'm just going to try to build a really strong foundation for you guys, for which, you know, once we get to the tactics and strategy guides, y you'll have that to build upon. So, yeah, with that being start, uh, said, let's go ahead and um, start talking about the, um, excuse me, the strengths of the uh, Dark Elves Cavalry. So, you know, one of the first... Uh, strengths that comes to mind when I think about the Juki is their variety and that not just the variety of the cav units they have but that the cav units can be used for multi-purpose uh, roles so you know you're not limited to just one thing so think about it you you know the dark elves have units such as a cold one night which is an anti-large uh, specialist but, you know, just as much as it excels at anti-large, it can also be used, you know, to deal with dwarves in an infantry fight if it needs to be. You know, you have, um, you know, Slanishy Harvesters and Doomfire Warlocks that have several different roles. They could be backline harass or they could be, you know, uh, you know uh, assisting with spells to uh, neuter the front line. You know, they could be taken out ethereal units. you got things such as, uh, you know, uh, Dark Riders of Repeater Crossbows who could be used for, you know, sniping lords. Or perhaps you want them, you know, uh, you know hitting an artillery piece in the back or you know or, or just you know um, learn away cav with the dps you their 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 individual unit or excuse me the cav units aren't just limited to just run roll like some you know some other races so i think that variety and that you know that spice of the druki is definitely a strength it's something that you should be considered you know you could be pretty creative with the way that you play dark elf cav units um, another strength of the Dark Elves, the Cavalry, and one of the I think is really defining is they have a very strong armor-piercing damage, you know, attacks, both, you know, melee and, and ranged. You know, when you think of the Dark Elves, what do you think of? You think of, you know, like the repeater crossbows. And uh, just an interesting fact, if any of you guys are wondering, you know, why the Druki have access to these really advanced crossbows when none of the other elves do, it's because, you know, Malakith, before, you know, the Sundering was actually, you know, best friends with the Dwarven King. And, you know, he shared, uh, you know, some of their technology with the Juki. And, you know, so after the Sundering happened and Malka fell, you know, that technology carried on. So, yeah, that's just a little, uh, you know, a little bit of lore for you, a little lore nugget for all you lore fans. And, you know, I'll, I'll save, we'll save, you know, the lore stuff for another guide. But I thought I'd just give that little treat for, you know, anybody who was just wondering why the Jukis have, you know. That, that technology. And uh, another strength of the Dark Elf Cav is that they're decently priced. And they have one of the best anti-large options um, in the game. So, yeah, when, you, when I say decently priced, I mean, you, you get, you know, a bang for your buck. And when we look at, like, say, the Cold One Knights, you're paying a 1,000, you know, gold for a high armor, high armor piercing, high damage, you know, anti-large cab unit. You know, what other u uh, race uh, in the game has, you know, uh, an anti-large unit around that price? You know, you, you, you got high elves who have, what, for 1400 you're getting a uh, dragon prince who's not anti-large. Or maybe, you know, you're looking at Empire, who has to pay 1600 to get a demigriff for their anti-large. And if you just look at it, you know, Blood Knights, you know, you know there's several, you know, three and 400 more than, uh, you know, Cold Ones. So, yeah, for $1,000, you know, 1000 gold, you're getting a really cheap, but, but you know, powerful anti-large option. And I think that's a definitely a strength of the Druki. It allows them to field more units, and with the support of some of your casters and spells and things like that, you can win those fights, even though they might be a little, you know, underpower, underpowered than, like, Cold, or, excuse me, um, Demigriffs. You know, but, yeah, that's definitely a strength worth uh, mentioning. Also, another, uh, you know, thing to mention about the Dark Elf Cavs is that they have, you know, access to a cavalry unit that has bound spells. And the only other race that has that is Wood Elves, and what I'm talking about specifically is Doomfire Warlocks. And the Wood Elves would be the uh, Sisters of Thorn. 
So the, yeah, those are the only two races that have cab units with you know bound spells, and you know, and that is such a great value, guys, because those spells don't cost you know your winds of magic, and they can really you know change the you know the course of an engagement. You it can really you know a especially harvesters word of pain could you know just up a right just win you a uh, you know a cav engagement or you know neuter a you know, enemy lord so it doesn't do any damage. I mean, I've won games because of you know bound spells by Doomfire Warlocks and the Celestial Harvesters. So that is definitely a strength of the uh, Druki and one that I wanted to uh, you know bring to you. And another one worth mentioning is that yeah, they're all you know their cab units generally have high armor. Some have really good physical resist. Uh, like for example, f- they, you know, once again, the Doomfire Warlocks have a 40% physical resist. I mean, that's just, you know, really, really good. You know, really high survivability. And generally, the, uh, yeah, the cav units will have a decent HP pool. They're not going to be, you know, routing and dying within seconds, like, say, like the, the green skins or, you know, something like that. Um, <clears throat> another strength of the Dark Elves cav, of course, is the chariot. You know, their chariot option. And if you guys have seen some of my recent replays, I've started to bring them. And that's because, you know, for one, they have 110 armor. For two, they have an armor piercing range, unlike, you know, like the High Elves chariot. And uh, for three, it has really good, com- you know, really good uh, charge bonus and combat stats if it needs to get in. And, uh, you know, last but not least, uh, you know, uh, um, another strength of the Dark Elves, and something that has both a pro and a con, it, it's just the Cold Ones itself. It, the Cold Ones are the mounts which the Dark Elves ride on, you know, the Velociraptors. You know, and the strengths, of course, are going to be the weapon strength, you know, the, the damage, the armor, things like that. But, the you know, the cons is something, uh, it's the Rampage. So, for anybody who's new, and for those who are not, let's just make sure we're all on the same page here. And, you know, what is the Rampage mechanic? You know, what, what are the specifics about that? And that's something you guys should know, so then you can use your unit to its full potential. So, you know, Rampaging, of course, is when uh, you know, your unit takes um, too much damage in a short amount of time. And when that happens, you'll lose control of that unit, um, and usually it will attack the closest enemy unit that's nearby. And, uh, yeah, so... Um, Different, uh, there's different, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Different percentages of damage taken that will uh, cause certain units to rampage. For example, something like a manticore, a feral manticore, or a feral man- uh, mammoth, uh, things like that will take, you know, they'll, they'll rampage after 25% of their uh, HP has been done in damage, uh, 25% of their life. Now, Cold One Knights and Dread Knights have something that's called Primal Instincts, which allows them to take up to 50% of their life before they rampage. So, yeah, I mean, that's just something you guys need to keep in mind when you're, you know, playing, uh, you know, with a Cold One Knight or Dread Knight. You know, keep uh, your, your eye on the HP pool. If you see, if you're in engagement and you see, like, there's, like, nearby spears or, you know, some kind of, you know, anti-large unit you can't win against, and you see that your life is getting ready to hit, you know, drop below 50, you need to, you know, either micro that unit to safety or reinforce it because you're getting ready to lose control. So that's just something that, you know, in time, you'll keep your eye on, and it'll help you, you know, make the decision of, you know, when to micro that unit, when to pull it out, when to engage, and things like that. So just keep that in mind, guys. 50% for Cold One Knights and Dread Knights, 25% for, you know, Manticores, uh, specifically on the, you know, the Dark elf roster and of course you know the manticore which we'll get in on my monster guide but like i always say it's a heat seeking missile you just need to get it into where it needs to go without taking damage and then you can just forget and, and just watch it rampage but um <clears throat> also guys uh this is really uh, you know uh, important thing to know is rampage generally lasts about 45 seconds but you know there's a few factors that can you know change that such as you know if, if the units can be healed if it's you know recently routed uh, leadership buffs from lords and certain spells or traits that you know might lessen that uh, that that 45 second time so um yeah what dark elf units are susceptible to rampage and you know this might be you know um, you know common sense for all you veterans but you know for anybody who might be new I and mean, just to make sure we're all on the same page here you know cold one chariots of course Cold One Knights, Cold One Dread Knights, uh, Witch Elves, but they, they don't rampage, you know, th- instead they cause other units to rampage, so I kind of lumped it in this category just because they do have something related to rampaging. Crone Hellebrone has an ability to make others rampage, which is called the Gaze of Malice, and it's that big red cloud that will go over units. And yeah, and that causes your units to rampage, but they also get a really big buff to their melee attack and damage. And of course the Manticore. So yeah, guys, you know, just keep it in mind, you know, those units and you know understanding what rampage is and how long it lasts is you know that th- 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 that can really help you so you know now we're just going to start you know looking at in uh, each individual unit 
And of course, we're going to start with the Dark Riders, guys. So yeah, the Dark Riders come in two different variants, uh, you know, shielded and unshielded, uh, 450 to 500, you know, respectively on the price. And yeah, the Dark Riders, you know, with this unit, you get a very cheap, very mobile, um, harass, uh, you know, artillery, uh, you know, attacker, um, you know, a, a, a um, charge absorbing, you know, vanguard uh, unit. Yeah, and so, yeah, one of the things that really sticks out about these units are the Dark Riders and how I play them. For one, is their vanguard, you know, potential. Um, th th these guys really excel at being in the back of the corner of the map, and when your opponent's not paying attention, setting them in to either, you know, shut down an artillery piece or to get into, like, archers and handgunners. Uh, also, uh, you know, they could be used to screen a charge f and to protect your more powerful units. So, you know, what I mean by that is, you know, say you have a unit of Cold One Knights and you're going against some Grail Knights, you know, Grail Knights are obviously more powerful, but if you can take their charge away from them and not allow them to apply the charge damage to your Cold One Knights and instead have a Dark Rider in front, that can actually, you know, tip the scales for you and allow you to, you know, trade a lot more, you know, effectively. So, yeah, you know, a speed of 92, they're very fast. And <clears throat> these guys, you know, you can use them against, you know, Way Watchers. You, know, they, you can use them, you know, chase another Skirmish Cav. And they're just, they're very, you know, they're a very powerful tool, especially with a couple of Chevrons. And, yeah, guys, they, um, they, you know, they have, of course, have, you know, the Missile Chance, a Bronze Shield. So, uh, yeah, so yeah, I think that about wraps them up. And, you know, when I get to the Tactics and Strategy Guide, I, you know, I'll show you some actual, like, gameplay of how to use them. Uh, but, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's pretty much information I think you should know about Dark Riders. Moving on to Cold One Knights. You know, we've already kind of, you know, <coughs> briefly talked about them. But, yeah, you have, you know, your the Dark Elves Anti-Large Specialist. You have something that costs us 1,000 gold, which, like, you know, like we discussed earlier, it's 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 a great value. You know, no other race has access to an anti-large you know cav unit for that price. And, you know, they do have the primal instincts like we talked about, but yeah, they also have a bronze shield, high armor, and yeah, these guys recently uh, got a buff to their uh, damage. So yeah, they don't t do as much on the charge bonus, but they have better melee attacks. So these guys are a little bit better in sustained combat, which makes more sense if you think about it. You know, what I mean, like you know, a velociraptor is not going to run as fast as a horse. But it was gonna, it's gonna, you know, do a lot better in combat than a horse would. Um, another, you know, a few things to, uh, you know, know about this unit is that both they have, or, I mean, it has murderous prowess, which if you remember my last guide, you know, murderous prowess, you know, gives you buffs to leadership, you know, uh, melee attack and things like that. And for any of you guys who didn't see my last guide, you know, I'll link it in the description. But yeah, we, I went over, you know, what it is murderous prowess and murderous mastery and, you know, what those could do for you. Also, a cold one night causes fear, guys. So, yeah, fear, you know, that, that's something that I didn't actually know till I was making this guide. I, you know, so that could come in handy, and that could really help against units like, you know, Greenskin, Skaven, you know, things like that who have a low leadership already. So, yeah, you know, if you look at their stats, guys, speed of 66, you know, the melee attack, 32, uh, 28, and 44 charge bonus. But, um, um, <clears throat> Like I was saying with the Dark Riders guys, these guys work the best if you have a Dark Rider in front to screen for them. They both take Archer, you know, uh, fire, and to take uncoming, uh, incoming charges. Now we're going to look at the Doomfire Warlocks, which is a very interesting unit for the Dark Elves. Uh, these guys are the Swiss Army Knives of the Druki. And, uh, yeah, so what I mean by that is, yeah, they they fill a, a variety of rules for the Dark Elves. So, yeah, they cost, you know, 1100 They have Vanguard deployment. They're very fast. And, they, yeah, they have magic and poison attacks. So, yeah, magic and poison. They also have murderous prowess and a physical resist of 40%, guys. So, yeah, 40%. That means, you know, for any, those who don't know, they, they're not going to take 40% of their, you know, of, of damage, of incoming da you know. Uh, now, the only way an enemy can get around that is by using magic damage. So, if your opponent brings magic damage, guys, you just need to, you know, either... You know, retreat your Doomfire Warlocks or have some other unit to, you know, to, to block that damage. Um, so, yeah, these guys also have two bound spells. Uh, one being Soul Blight and the other one being Lesser Doombolt. So, um, yeah, the Doomfire Warlock guys is, uh, you know, a very inter interesting unit. Um, they have certain matchups where they, you know, really shine at, such as the Wood Elf matchup because of their speed and physical resist. Or against, like, vampires dealing with ethereal units. I mean, these guys... Um, the, the the especially the Sinesi harvesters are um, almost a must pick, and you know, and if you're playing on a competitive level, just because of the you know, the bound spells really do make a difference. 
And like I said earlier, they don't cost any wins of magic. So looking at Soul Blight, guys, anybody who doesn't know, I'm going to have a guide on magic too, but we'll just briefly talk over, you know, what Soul Blight does is it lowers armor by 30 and it lowers weapon damage by 25%. And this is an area of effect spell. So yeah, it's pretty nice just to cast that and get, you know, all of a sudden you're just, you know, debuffing, you know, neutering some of the uh, combat potential of, you know, the enemy that you cast this on. And these ones also have a, a Lesser Doom Bolt. And the Lesser Doom Bolt <clears throat> is a, uh, you know, it's the magic missile that comes from the sky. It, uh, yeah, it's a magic damage, so keep that in mind, guys. So anything that has a physical resist, it will do more damage to. It's good against armor. And, yeah, it's, it excels at a single unit. So uh, a single unit could be maybe like a unit of, like, archers. Or it could be a single entity, such as, like, a lord. Um, me, personally, I like to use this not so much on lords. I feel like it's a lot better on low-armored um Units such as like high elf archers, you know, green skin, uh, savage orcs, things like that. You know, I'll do that damage to a lord. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, I, I think it. You know, if there's a lot of units uh, clumped up, that's where you can, you know, pretty much get the best uh, damage from it. Also, yeah, the Doomfire Warlock has you know 92 speed, guys, so it's very fast. And yeah, if you look at it, you know, its stats are you know it's not bad, pretty de- you know pretty decent charge bonus. Um, the melee defense is really low, but like I said, it has that 40% physical resist, so they're you know they'll stay in combat a lot longer than you would think. And um, uh, yeah, there's a few things like I wrote here, guys. You know, um, you know, keep in mind it's really good against uh, Mortis engines, the Green Knight. Banshees, you know, Celestia Dire Fin, stuff like that, guys. If you, you know, expect to be fighting something like that, bring these guys. Now we're going to look at the Cold One Drendites, guys. And these units are, um, you don't see a lot of them. You, know, you don't see a lot of people bring them. And um, <clears throat> that's for, you know, pretty much that rampaging mechanic. But, yeah, I like to call these guys the can openers. And because of that, is you just, the reason for that is because of how much AP they, they do. These guys are just specialized in opening up dwarves. You know, dwarves are like a big metal can, while these guys are your can opener. So, yeah, they cost, you know, uh, you know uh, about 1,200. Um, have armor piercing. And, yeah, these guys are melee calves. So they're not, you know, relying on the charge bonus. I mean, they have a small charge bonus, but these guys you leave in sustained combat. They do have primal instincts. Which means they'll rampage at 50% of their health, you know, like we were talking about. They have a shield, though, uh, you know, a bronze, which is a 35% missile resist. And they have a very high armor, guys, a high ar- you know, 120 armor, which is just really good. It allows these guys to, uh, you know, stay in battle for a long time. Uh, just like the Cold One Knights, these guys have murderous prowess, and they uh, cause fear. And, yeah, if you look at their stats, guys, 42... Uh, 44, and their weapon strength of 48, 34, that being armor piercing. So, yeah, these guys, you know, you're going to send these guys into Longbeard. You're going to send these guys into Chosen. You're going to send these guys into, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? The uh, Great Swords. These guys, you know, like I said, just your can openers. If you have something highly armored and, and it's something that's, you know, tough to go through, send these guys in. And they're, you know, and when I was talking like earlier, and you know, what, you know, the, one of the strengths of the Dark Elves is, you know, how uh, versatile, and um, you know, how, how there's like variety in the units, how they could you know, excel at different roles. Well, yeah, the Cold One Dread Knights are a perfect example of that because not only are they excel at dealing with infantry, they can also you know hold their own in a cab fight. You know, send these guys in against some. Um, uh, what are those kind of questing knights? Yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna whoop them. So these guys, and even against some girl knights, are gonna do a lot of damage. You know, yeah, they might lose, you know, because they you know, they have anti large, but you're still gonna do a lot of damage. So don't be afraid to use these guys in a cav, you know, engagement as well. Now we go to, <coughs> sorry about that. Now we go to the um, one of the most iconic uh, units of the Dark Elves. And, of course, that is the Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbows. And, you know, now I, I told you guys a little bit about the lore on it. But, yeah, th- this is one of the most powerful cav units of the Dark Elves. And, it, uh, and um, yeah, I mean, for a few reasons. Both, one being, you know, the cost for 600 You're getting a armor-piercing, you know, uh, cav unit, you know, missile unit. Whereas, you know, think about it. Like, Wood Elves have, you know, they, they don't have armor-piercing um, horse cav. High elves don't have armor piercing uh, horse calves, just dark elves. So yeah, that's a really pretty you know, big advantage to have. It's going to allow you to kill other cavalry really quick. And I, I, I consider these guys the backbone of the Juki, just because these guys will pretty much assist in every engagement that you go in. You know, they're going to help your front line. They're going to help your cold ones. They're going to help deal with you know like the lords. You know, sniping the lord. Like these guys, just you know, are just the, you know the ideal support unit for any you know proper dark elf army. 
Uh, they have Vanguard deployment. They also have Murder's Prowess. But yeah, look at this, guys. Speed of 95. So yeah, these guys are very fast. And yeah, like, I like to use them in two different ways. You know, you can use them as a direct damage on to say like your enemy brings some. Um, uh, Reichsguard or uh, or some uh, uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun. Well, these guys can either you know shoot them or you, know, you force your enemy to chase them away, which means that he's not getting no value out of it, and they'll never catch him because of their speed. Um, they have 16 uh, ammunition, guys. It means they get 16 volleys of that armor piercing, so it's pretty decent. You know, you, you don't want to waste it, but it could do a, you know. Um, you know, a significant amount of damage. Um, it has a range of 115, so it is, you know, a lot shorter than Illyrian Ravers and uh, Glade, Gar Glade Riders and things like that. So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, missile damage is 23. I love it being armor piercing. And uh, uh, it has a reload speed of 12.6 uh, seconds. Uh, but you do get two projectiles. So yeah, that means every 12.6, you know, a volley is uh, coming off. So yeah, I mean, these units, guys, aren't meant to be. Um, aren't meant to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, counters to other, um, other, uh, guy can talk, missile calves. These guys aren't meant to be, you know, uh, trading with Illyrian Reavers or Glade, uh, riders. They're meant to be dealing with, uh, you know, melee cav, lords, powerful armored things. So, yeah, don't try to use these guys to, you know, um, you know, trade with, like, green skin, cav, and things like that. That's what dark riders are for. That's what harpies are for. These guys are just for DPS. You know, they're, they're meant to be on the offensive. So keep them on the offensive. And when we get to my tactics guide, I'll show you, you know, you know, why that is. So, yeah, um, like I said here, here guys, they're, you know, they, they're, they're here to provide overwatch and support. Uh, they're a, a deterrent, you know, to your enemy. And what I mean for a deterrent is, like, if, you, if your opponent sees that you have some cold one, uh, or excuse me, dark riders for Peter Crossbows, they're going to think twice before sending their heavy cab in or sending their lord in the goon. And, you know, they're, uh, they have a little bit of a psychological warfare with them just because of their damage potential. So that's, you know, that's powerful. Have a couple of these mixed in with your army, guys, and it's going to, you know, force your opponent to have to play a little bit safer, you know, less, you know, take, you know, get sniped or, you know, get his unit wiped out. It's also really good at you know luring away enemy cav, and this is a really good tactic. It's almost a win-win for you guys. So when you have you know dark riders or repeater crossbows, and you get into a cav fight with these, you know, so you say your opponent has some uh, demigriffs, right, and you bring a cold or excuse me dark rider. Well, so it's either going to be one of two options. You're going to be shooting him, and he's going to ignore you, or he's going to have to chase you away, which means you know he he won't catch you. But it means that that demigriff now is not attacking other units. It's not, you know, helping his army. He's forced to chase you away. So you've spent 600, where he's just spent, you know, four, uh, 1,600. So yeah, do you get what I'm trying to say? So this goes for, you know, Reichsguard, you know. They, they pay, you know, 1,100 for a Reichsguard. And all of a sudden, you know, a 600 Dark Rider shooting at him. Now he can either, you know, ignore the damage and try to keep you in his cycle charges. Or he could chase you, which he won't catch you. And now you just lured away a unit twice as expensive as you. So I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to say, yeah, guys. It's a win-win, um, and that's just you know really good strength of the uh, Dark Elves. Also, yeah, Vanguard attacks. These are really good. You can put these guys in the melee, and you see an opening to get some like rear charges into archers or artillery pieces. You know, this is what they excel at, and yeah, they're really good against monsters um, and Lord sniping. I mix these guys in with a Lord. Like I like to use you know the uh, Dread Lord of Sword and Crossbow. Put them up on a Pegasus and they, uh, fly them with, you know, either on a horse with these guys or on the Pegasus and you know, the Raven Heralds. And yeah, I mean, these guys will, you know, uh, snipe through a Carl France or a Hydra or a Dragon or a, you know, a uh, Arachnid Spider with, you know, within minutes. It's just a really powerful unit. Uh, next, we go to the Cold One Chariot. And yeah, I mean, like I said in my recent guys, uh, the Cold One Chariot is a beast um, because it has, you know, like I was saying earlier, um, you know, the armor piercing ranged. So for a thousand, you know, a thousand gold, which is a very you know, reasonable price, it's uh, deadly from up close and afar. Um, and yeah, you get that high armor. So 110 armor, whereas the High Elves Chariot, Missile Chariot, is only like 50. So you have the armor advantage, you have the AP advantage. Um, it will, you know, it has primal instinct, so of course it will rampage, so keep that in mind. It also has uh, murderous prowess and can cause fear, so any of the cold ones are going to cause fear, so you can just keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, a few notable stats that you guys should know, and I'm sure you could read this here, but yeah, you know, it has 66 speed, which is pretty good for, it, you know, a Velociraptor. But yeah, 60 charge bonus, and, uh, you know, 125 range, so it's going to have the same range as a repeater crossbow, guys. 
Um, so keep that in mind. Um, and missile damage is a lot more, though. You look at it; it has 102, whereas the uh, uh, the um, Dark Rider repeater crossbow was like 20 something. So yeah, it's a lot more damage. Uh, 24 of that being armor piercing. And yeah, this one has a lot faster reload time. Now, keep in uh, mind, you only have, what, three chariots with, I think, two archers on each. So, yeah, you know, you're getting like six, you know, shots per volley or something like that. But, um, yeah, it shoots a lot faster and these you do a lot more damage. And if you need to send it into combat, it has a lot more, you know, um, it has pretty d decent combat stats. So, 24, 26. So, yeah, guys, um, you know, you leave this unit in, on skirmish. You know, it'll, it'll, it'll let it do the free damage when you see an opening, you know, you, you charge it in, pull it back out, let it go back to skirmish. You know, I had a uh, Dark Elf versus, uh, what was it, Wood Elves, or, it's my one of my last two videos I did, um, I forget which one it was, maybe it was Dark Elves versus, uh, uh, God, what was it, um, but anyways, what I did was, is, you know, oh, versus Tomb Kings, yeah, if you guys check out my recent video, the Dark Elf versus Tomb Kings, you can see, you know, these guys in action. So, yeah, let's go ahead and look at the Regiments of Renown now for, uh, for the Dark Elf Cav units. Uh, we already went over the infantry ones in my previous guide, so take a minute here to uh, appreciate Malekith and his badass armor. I always wonder, though, does that helmet get caught indoors, though? Uh, or does it, like, weigh down his head? Yeah, you know, it just doesn't look very comfortable or practical to have a helmet like that, but it does make him look badass. So yeah, starting out with our first Regiment of Renown, guys, we have the Raven Heralds. And the Raven Heralds are criminally underused i don't know why people don't like them but i think they're freaking so much fun to play with and they're very good now of course guys these are glass cannons and i can't stress that enough these guys are glass cannons you have to make an effort to avoid damage because these guys will die if somebody blows on them they'll die but yeah these guys you know also are your you know, lord sniping specialists these guys can also though if you can keep them alive they will put a smack down on whatever they're hitting so yeah, for a thousand gold, you're getting a flying repeater crossbow, you know, pretty much. Um, they're super fast, even faster than the ground variant. Uh, and they have, yeah, like I said, high armor piercing damage. Um, they also have murderous prowess. Uh, yeah, but their uh, speed is 105. And then let me make a correction. The chariot actually has 10 more um, range than the uh, Dark Riders. I said uh, repeater crossbows. I said that they had the same range. It's actually 115 for the repeater crossbows, 125 for the chariot. So yeah, just let me make that correction real quick. So yeah, these guys have the same range as the repeater crossbow, but a lot more missile damage. I mean, if you look at that, 58, 22 being an uh, you know armor piercing. But, you know, they only have 16 ammunition too, guys. So, I mean, you've got to make each volley count. So, you know, one of my favorite, you know, and I've done a lot of replays like this. One of my favorite builds to go is when I take a Dreadlord up on the Flying Pegasus with, you know, with these guys. With the Gilded Eye buff, because the Dreadlord has a buff that will give plus 20% more armor-piercing damage. And you put them up here with that, like in a Chaos matchup. And, yeah, I mean, you take out a unit of Chosen of Halberds within seconds. You could take out, you know, uh, Kolik on the ground. You could take out Dragon Ogres. It's just really powerful. It's pretty much a guarantee to take out an elite, you know, infantry unit of your opponent. And there's certain matchups where it's just really good. Like, I wouldn't bring these guys... You know, maybe not in like a uh, you know wood elf. You know, unless I was trying to you know s you know be sneaky about it. But you know, but you know versus like um, Norska, um, maybe even dwarves sometimes. Um, you know, chaos, even empire to deal with their cavalry if they don't have supportive like you know crossbows and stuff like that. These guys will, will shine. So yeah, just keep in mind of that synergy with the dreadlord guys. You know, you, it's the gilded eye buff. So now we go to the Celestia Harvesters, and yeah, the Celestia Harvesters guys are the, uh, like I said, one of the uh, most powerful uh, regiment of renowns for the uh, Dark Elves. Um, yeah, I like to say noobs cry their OP, just because since these guys have been out, people have been complaining that they're just overpowered and stuff like that, and they did get a little bit of a uh, uh, nerf in the last patch, but I don't think they're, they're OP. I mean, I've played against them, I've played with the Dark Elves, I just think, you know, they're just... There's no more OP than having, you know, the the Fireborn of the High Elves, you know, having that super massive anti-large beast like that or something, you know. But, yeah, these guys do cost more than the um, Doomfire Warlocks, obviously, since they're Regents of Renown. Uh, what's different about these guys, you know, they're pretty much just going to be the same as the, you know, the, the Doomfires, you know, magic, poison attacks. Uh, the physical resist is the same, but just a little bit higher stats. But they have two different spells. <coughs> 
instead of having the Lesser Doom Bolt and the Soul Blight, these guys have actually two more useful spells, in my opinion. They have Word of Pain and Soul Stealer. And Word of Pain is, like, I can't wait to get to my magic guide and talking specifically about Laura Dark because it's it's such a powerful spell. Um, it, you know, just being able to remove, you know, someone's uh, melee attack, their chance of hitting you, and while, meanwhile, you're just hitting them, that you know, that that wins so many fights. Be it a, a cab fight, be it a lord fight, be it a, you know, a front line fight. It's just a very powerful spell, and you get it for free. You get And you actually get two castings of it with the uh, Celestia's Harvesters here. So yeah, let's, let's look at their uh, spells. Uh, Word of Pain, what it does, guys, is it gives minus 44 melee attack, minus 60% accuracy. It lasts for 40 seconds, and like I said, you get two charges of it. So yeah, this it, it not only is it good at like the melee attack aspect, if you wanted to use it for the accuracy debuff, so say you're fighting against a, um, say your opponent brings Queen Bess, and you have this Vanguard. Well, you you know if you're taking a lot of damage, you know drop Word of Pain on it. All of a sudden, it's going to have minus sixty percent accuracy. Maybe a, a group of Way Watchers is hitting you know hitting you. You could you know debuff one of them, or you know maybe a um, a uh, what's it was a Ryan throwing spears at you. You know you, not only now have you just debuffed his up close thing, you've also took his range, you know uh, potential away from him too. And it's for forty seconds, guys. So it's just really powerful. I love taking a supreme sorceress, Laura Dark, or just a sorceress of dark. Um, it, it's just you know it's just a very powerful spell. And like I said, like I like to use it specifically with Marathi, um, or a, you know, or, or in a calf fight. You know, like say I'm going a uh, cold one nights are going against like the uh, a unit of demigriffs. Well, the demigriffs normally would just spank them, but all of a sudden I drop word of pain on them. Well, now my cold one nights just destroyed those demigriffs. So yeah, really good spell, guys. And also soul stealer. And yeah, soul stealer is practically or just for tense of purposes, it's a healing spell. So it will heal your celestial harvesters. <coughs> it also does cause damage to your uh, to the combatant which you um, cast it on, uh, absorbing its uh, its hit points. And yeah, it's it's strong. It's best used against a enemy lord or hero, guys, versus a single combatant. And you only get one charge of it, so definitely make it count. And uh, like I was saying earlier, guys, you know these guys are best used alongside other cab units. Um, you know, like I was saying, you know, run these guys with a unit of cold ones to uh, you know nerf. Or say you're going to get some grill knights. These guys would do really good. You know, send a unit of cold one knights in front of them. Uh, these guys will bypass the physical resist of the grill knights. Or maybe you're fighting, you know, some uh, hex raves or things like that. You know, these guys excel. Or, you know, maybe, um, you know, you could vanguard them with some dark riders in the back, try to get into, you know, missile lines. Yeah, they, 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 they just work really good with their units and alone. And last but not least, guys, we come to the Chill of Santar. So, yeah, what is the Chill of Santar, Atticus, you say? And I say, guys, it is a frost-breathing Hydra. So, yeah, it is the uh, cream de crow, is how you say it, the uh, ma- uh, the big baddie of the, the Druki. It costs 2,000 gold. It's uh, very powerful. It slows enemies, and it's hard to kill. So, yeah, I mean, that, that pretty much chills up the, the, the chill. That pretty much uh, sums up the Chill of Santar. It uh, causes frostbite, guys, which, uh, if you don't know what frostbite is, it lowers speed by 36%, and it's applied when the the uh, War Hydra hits a unit. So, yeah, I mean, this is really, this has a lot of practical uses, if you think about it, which we'll get into in a second, but it's also terror-causing. So, yeah, this guy works really good with Doom and Darkness Overcasted. Works really good, you know, uh, you know, in certain matches like against like Skaven, uh, Greenskins, I like to bring them. I even like bringing this against the Dwarves because they never expect it. And most Dwarves don't have that much anti-large, maybe a few unit, uh, Slayers in the back, but uh, as long as you shut down the artillery pieces with Harpies, this guy will just crush through, you know, Longbeards and Hammers and things like that. And this is something I, don't, I feel like a lot of people didn't know about the Chill Santar, but he also has a, yeah, he does have a missile resist of 35%. So yeah, you guys, you know, he he could take a little bit of you know, ranged, you know, you know, cannons and you know, handgunners and things like that. You know, he, he can absorb some of it. He's not as fragile as you might think, because also he has regeneration. So uh, yeah, but um, you just keep in mind the Hydra's regeneration uh, is you know, only active after it's dropped below fifty percent of his HP. So just keep that in mind, guys. And also he has uh, three charges of freezing breath attacks, um, which uh, it plus fresh bite. So instead of doing fire, you're shooting ice. Uh, it does a lot of damage, and it you know will slow the enemy, which it breathes that ice onto. Um, keep in mind, guys, this Chill Santar and all Hydras have uh, minus 25% weakness to fire, and that's just because they have regeneration. Um, yeah, so you know this guy is armor piercing attacks with high weapon damage. You know it's in the like the 400s. 
And yeah, and he, he's really good at keeping from, you know, like uh, units from like cycle charging you. So say you're getting hit by you know some Empire Knights, well you breathe you know he, if he hits him, you know the, the Chill Sunter hits him either through his breath attack or just normal attack. Now all of a sudden now it's you know lost its speed by thirty six percent. So or unit of Blood Knights or things like that. So it just makes him that you know much harder to cycle charge you or to supply that damage. So yeah, just a few notable stats as you can read right here, guys. It has look at that melee attack of sixty one. So it means it's going to be hitting a lot. It has fifty armor, guys. So it's not in invulnerable. It can take some damage, but um, yeah, you know, fifty armor is better than nothing. But look at that weapon strength, guys. Three hundred armor piercing. Three hundred. I mean, this thing will crush through you know other monsters or infantry units or anything that has armor. This this is the beast to bring. And a pretty decent charge bonus. You can use it, guys, you know, you, uh, you know, for that charge bonus as well. So, um, yeah, like the little note I, hear, I wrote here, guys, uh, land its breath attacks to get the full uses and damage potential of this unit. So, yeah, if you take, you know, invest 200, you know, 2,000 gold in this unit, get get off the breath attacks. Get them in combat, but also right before combat, get off the breath attacks. Say, you know, you, why, why, why not? You know, if you're paying for it, get that damage. And, uh, yeah, he works best alongside infantry units supporting the front line. So, yeah, he, uh, mix him in with your, your Harganefs or your Sisters of Slaughter or your Bleak Swords. And, yeah, I mean, he, he'll cause terror, he'll crush him, and you'll have other units to protect him. And, uh, yeah, and I'm gonna say right here, protective harpies, guys. If you do bring him and you're going against a ranged faction like Dwarves, Empire, you know, bring some harpies to, uh, you know, to shut down the, the cannons. You know, to buy him time to get into melee. Oops, we went a little bit too far. So yeah, final thoughts, guys. Um, so yeah, final thoughts. Um, the Dark Elf Cav units individually are weaker than some of their, you know, like uh, um, High Elf counterparts or Empire counterparts. You know, like if you take a uh, a uh, Cold One versus, or you know, if you take a uh, a Cold One versus like a uh, what's I'm trying to say. A, a, a demigriff it will lose you know a dragon prince versus a cold one you know or a dark rider or you know stuff like that like a silver helm will beat a dark rider um a uh knights of the blazing sun will beat a uh, you know a celestial heart oh maybe not I'd, I'd like to see that fight but what i'm trying to what i'm trying to get at guys is whereas some other cab units of other races are just more powerful the dark elves are more powerful when combined yeah, so so if you use a cold one knight alongside a uh, dark rider to, to absorb the charge, right there you have a powerful synergy and a way to win. Or if you do a celestial harvester uh, or a do fair warlock alongside your you know cold one dread knights, all of a sudden you're you know you're lowering the you know you cast um, soul blight and lower their armor and weapon damage. So what what I'm trying to get with that thought is uh, the dark elf units are best used when when it's a combination of each other. So also like you know a uh, a cold one knight goes against a grail knight. Well, if you support it with some dark knight or dark riders for Peter Crossbow. So yeah, you got your, you know, your cold knight fighting in melee. All meanwhile, the uh, dark riders for Peter Crossbows are shooting arrows and you know to help them out. So bring the, you know use your cav in combination with each other, guys. Like support them. Don't just you know send them in alone because you, generally you're going to be underpowered from the other races you're fighting against. Um, the next thought, like I wanted to talk to you guys about, like I said, was this, you know, support your cavalry for Peter Crossbows. Um, th those guys are really, you know, the backbone of the Druki, like I said. Um, another thing to keep in mind when playing the, you know, the, the Dark Elf Cav is to use magic alongside it to ensure you win. So, you know, use Word of Pain. You know, if you're going against a unit of, um, uh, uh, what are they called? The um, Fireborn. If you're going against a unit of Boar Riders of the Greenskins, you know, drop a Word of Pain, drop a Chill Wind to slow it right before they get into, you know, right before the two arm or two, you know, cav units collide to, uh, you know, weaken their charge bonus. You know, use a Soul Blight to lower the armor to make it easier for your Dark Riders to win against Lyrian Reavers. You know, you get what I'm saying? Like, support them with magic. And you can either be through magic of your Lords or magic of, like, your, you know, your Doomfire Warlocks and Celestial Harvesters and stuff like that. And also, uh, you know, a final thought I have, guys, and is, um, yeah, like I said, use lords to assist with the cavalry engagements. So Marathi excels at this, guys. She is one of the best, um, you know, uh, cav uh, babysitters, I like to call them. Like, you know, fly her around, and you see a cav engagement getting ready to happen. Send Marathi in there, you know. Just say you see some cold and one nights getting ready to charge into some, uh, you know, uh, Reich's Guard. Well, send Marathi in, you know, to help with that because she's going to be lowering, lowering the, you know, the, the Reich's Guard by 18 melee attack. So all of a sudden they're, you know, their chance to hit just got cut in half 
She's also anti-large with armor piercing, and yeah, and then she can also debuff with all her spells. So it just you know you, all you're doing is ensuring that your unit's going to win the calf fight, which then you can send it elsewhere. You just protected your cold one knights, and yeah, you just killed it a lot quicker too because of Marathi, which means that you can just get those cold one knights somewhere else. Though you know, and that's all what the game is about. Or another example of using a lord to assist your calf, you know, is like a dread lord with a uh, sword and crossbow. You know, like the one I'm always talking about. You know, have him you know a little bit behind a calf unit and when the calves you know uh, collide have your dreadlord just you know shooting in from behind just assisting doing that damage you know so you know, the thing i'm trying to get at is you know help your cav units you know assist them and um the last thought i would say guys is there's a great synergy with cav and infantry they work really good with each other you know what i mean like and they're very dependent on each other you know your cav needs uh, you know, the backline harass, you know, either to be to shut down artillery pieces and range or, you know, to, um, you know, just to be more effective. And same with the uh, cav. They need infantry to, you know, to, you know, the, the wind crush and get into, um, you know, to get into advantageous, you know, situations for your, your backline harass and things like that. So, yeah, you know, it, it, there's just a natural balance between cav, infantry, dark elves just, you know, find that, that happy middle. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, guys, that is my uh, Dark Elf Guide for the Cav. I hope that was helpful. Um, the next guide I'll be doing is the uh, Monster Guide. And, um, yeah, I just want to also want to do a uh, special thanks to Reverend. Um, he uh, kind of helped me with the, uh, the information on uh, Rampage. So I just wanted to give a special thanks to him. Um, I'll link his channel in the description. He's also a YouTube caster. And uh, so, yeah, guys, um, I appreciate you sticking with me through these guides. I hope that it has uh, been helpful for you. If there's any questions you have or any feedback and things like that, I um, encourage you to, you know, I ask that you please leave it in the, in the uh, uh, you know, in the chat or um, leave it below. And, uh, yeah, I'll respond to every single comment. Um, and, uh, yeah, the, like I said, the next guy is going to be the monster one. And after that, we'll go into spells and heroes, and then we'll get into tactics and strategy, guys. And that's the one where, you know, we're going to have videos. We're going to be looking at, you know, how you do actually, now that you know these each units, how do you actually play them? You know, we're going to look at certain builds. We're going to, you know, it, 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 this is going to be a very comprehensive, you know, like I said from the start, like instead of doing just one big, like, five-hour guide, you know, I wanted to break it down into, you know, bite-sized intervals. So I hope this guide was uh, insightful. I hope it, um kind of maybe you know taught you something new you know or refreshed you on something and um yeah so guys it's atticus merry christmas um thank you all and i hope you have a good new year and stay tuned for more content all right guys bye